Dear brethren, let's go quickly because we can upload this video to bless others. You will have to connect the dots. It took over a year to finish and get the whole picture, but it is straightforward to understand once we have the day of the Lord. The Lord has a single calendar that is lunar and solar, and it is 354 days long. He has no other calendar, and it is not Roman. We must understand that after the death and resurrection of Christ, everything is out of face and much more for the Jews who, to this day, remain blind and do not recognize the Messiah Jesus. So they will celebrate this year and are out of date because they celebrate the holidays at the wrong times. Because they have a leap year on their calendar and a leap every 19 years. I don't know how many leap years they have, seven or eight, but they are out on the Lord's calendar. So we have to go to Aviv, which is in spring. We can corroborate all this in the Old Testament. These are agreements or orders from Almighty God written in the Bible that after 14 days, the people of Israel had to celebrate Passover in the first month because the Lord brought them out of the land of Egypt. So they had the Passover festival there, and the next day at the unleavened bread, he says, and you will celebrate all this to remembering that I got you out of Egypt quickly. Then we must understand that the festival marks the beginning of the Lord's week, since the Lord in Daniel's 69th week, which is another topic, dies on Easter, and therefore the 70th week has to be resumed on Easter, that is, in the last seven years then, within the 70th week of the previous seven years, the beginning of the year is marked by the moon and the sun. But it is not the beginning of the week of the Lord. The week of the Lord makes the festival. We can see this in Genesis 1 verse 14, where he says that the Lord set the most incredible lights for the sun and the moon to mark the festivals, the days and the years, which is why the festivals which is the same word that appears in Leviticus 23, a solemn festival, which is the word Moab in Hebrew is the same. Still, your Bible will have it wrong because it is translated as seasons. That is a wrong translation because it means holiday. The Lord put it to mark his holidays. That is not a coincidence. It may be a coincidence for some humans, but for God it is not. So, all these ordinances of the Feast of Unleavened Bread until September 17th are in our calendar, and there are 177 days right precisely in the middle of God's calendar. Someone may say it is a coincidence, but wait until it concludes because there are many coincidences. I don't think it is a coincidence. This is the only year where all this happens. There is no other year in history. Listen carefully. So we see that at 177 days it is from feast to feast. Notice this from feast to feast to the last, the first feast at Easter. That's why it has to be at the beginning of the week. It can't be in the middle of the week, as others want to make it out to be. And here we have September, the seventh month, they have it. The ordinances in Leviticus are also solemn festivals. We have the festival of tabernacles, the only festival appearing in Zechariah. The only festival celebrated in the millennium is that of the tabernacles. Could it be a coincidence that it falls on a full moon just as it fell on the festival of unleavened bread when they left Egypt? And here the Lord is in the middle. If the week is going to take us off the earth, for many, it may be a coincidence. Well, it would be another coincidence that the Feast of Tabernacles means a meeting with Him, a fixed time appointment. And also, at the Feast of Tabernacles, we will be in heaven, as the scriptures say in Psalm 27, we read, I will keep you in the tabernacle, which is in heaven. You still think it's a coincidence? There is a full moon on both holidays, and a significant fact is that it is from the 17th to the 18th. For God, the day begins in the afternoon and ends in the evening. So obviously in the journey of half the week from the 17th to the 18th leaves, and the other half of the week of the last three and a half years enters. From there, we go to the bottom line on the chart, and we have the first day of the Feast of Tabernacles which is the last trumpet of the last feast of the year. The Apostle Paul said to the last trumpet, Hence blessed coincidence of the rapture of the church. The scriptures say that the daily or continuous sacrifice has been removed, as we will see later in the study of Daniel 9.27. The correct interpretation is that the sacrifice and the offering are the church and the righteous actions of the saints. According to the Bible and the Apostles Paul and Peter, this ministry can add that the Holy Spirit on earth is the daily sacrifice, and we are the offerings given to God for our righteous actions. Continuing with this study, Brother Christian says, 
From the removal of the daily sacrifice to the abomination of desolation, there are 1,290 days. Still, why? In verse 12 of Daniel, it says, Blessed is he who comes to the 1,335 days because the second coming of Christ takes place in the clouds, and every eye will see him in his second coming. Some versions say, And he comes back with the angels, those who will be in heaven, those who have been the raptured ones. It is impressive to see all this, because it is exactly 1,335 days from the removal of the continuous sacrifice until the second coming on May 14, 2028. If you count from September 18, 2024, the 1,235 days, we have a result of May 14, 2028. You can read the prophecy of the Lord Jesus being fulfilled in Matthew 24:34. He says it wouldn't pass this generation of Israel. The Lord told us the day without anyone noticing until this time. He said it was the last day, but at that time it was hidden. It was the last day of the year 80 of what the Bible says. The most robust generation, 70 to 80 years old. The Lord had mercy. Even the most robust, the last day exactly, that falls precisely along with the 1,135 days of Daniel S.A. are prophetic books. So for you, would this be a huge coincidence? I say it as a question. Take the good, throw away the bad. There is a more extensive study that you will see later on this same topic with great detail. Now, I will add to this study that if all this is a coincidence, let's see the moon on the 18th. Look what moon we will have during 2024. We can enjoy two super moons, the one on September 18th, which I told you meant the last harvest, and that of October 17th. Those are the only two supermoons here this year, 2024. In another video, I will explain why I mentioned the moon on October 17th, because Israel is going to be protected. It will be first the rapture for the church and then for Israel when it recognizes Jesus, because the rapture will activate precisely the awakening of the Jews, and they, a remnant, will be protected, as Revelation says, for 1,260 days. So if you add the 30 days from September 18 to October 17, and the 1,260 days that the book of Revelation says Israel will be protected in the desert, you get the 1,290 days of Daniel chapter 12 verse 11, which is mathematically exact, neither one day more nor one day less. When Jesus went and wanted to enter, the disciples told him to go up to the feast. They said, go up. I'm going now because my time has not yet come. That is, the day is not a chance. If you want to see it as a coincidence, it is the only coincidence in the history of this day that I am telling you. And this confirms that for Almighty God, the first of the year is March 11, 2024, which means that the Jews are wrong and outdated and whatever else you want to add. So, brethren, I am going to finish by telling you the events that happened on September 18th of this year, September 18th, 2024, the only day in history on which the following is fulfilled. There has been no other day in the history of forever and ever since the world was created. 1. The first day of the Festival of Tabernacles, blessed coincidence, which is the only festival that appears in the millennium, where all nations have to go up to celebrate that feast. Since as at Passover and in the days of unleavened bread, the Father brought out Israel from Egypt, so the Lord is also going to take us out of the land. It is that which is going to remain perpetually, forever and ever, of the rapture of the church, which is the most significant event we expect. 2. The middle of the seventieth week, neither a day more nor a day less. The passage from the seventeenth to the eighteenth is where the rapture occurs in full full moon. 3. In the middle of God's calendar year. Blessed coincidence. 4. First super full moon of the year. 5. Precisely the 13 to 35 days as of May 14th, 2028. 6. The last day of the 80 years of Israel after emerging on May 14th, 1948, and the parable of our Lord Jesus Christ, Matthew 24:34. It is so simple to understand that when we are with him, we will say, Lord, it was so simple. We had it in front of us. What happens is that the devil wants to confuse and confuse many. Of course, this revelation must come to light during this time. But many stay with the teaching they received long ago and do not deepen their study of the scriptures. 
Remember that the Bible says that whatever we ask in prayer to the Father in the name of Jesus, He will give us, and we ask with my wife and our prayer group. The Lord began to give us visions and dreams, but I asked the Lord to show me this knowledge in the Bible if He wanted me to share it. And so it was just seven days after asking Him, He revealed it to me in the Scriptures. That He revealed it to me after seven days is not a coincidence. Now, if you want to take it as a perfect coincidence and stick with the superficial thing that no one knows the day and hour, you are saying that Jesus is not God because God knows everything. So we can say that he did not know it at that time because he was submitted to the Father in obedience to him. Jesus was stripped of his deity to fulfill a purpose. But best of all, the verse does not say that the Father will not say it in the future because the Father does not do anything without first revealing it to his children, the prophets. By now Christ knows. In the year 33, he was talking to the apostles. We also confirm that the verb could be better translated because the original says the day and time no one has known, which you will see in detail in another video. You can accept it or reject it, but you cannot call me a false prophet because I am showing you what is in the Bible, and the false prophet is the one who cannot prove the revelation received by the scriptures. I can prove what I'm talking about with the word. Now, there are people with no faith who will not see it because without faith, it is impossible to please God. Many are waiting for September 19th to accuse me of being false, but that day will come to them with sudden destruction. They will be, as Luke 21 says, frightened by the waves that are going to take away half of the American continent. These waves will fall because it is God's first judgment— and everyone will discover that Jesus Christ is the King of kings and Lord of lords on the day after the rapture.